Well, it's time now for the day's second look at the day's papers. For that, Diptyka Laurent joins us. Now, Russian lawmakers have approved legislation that will allow authorities to send electronic military summons with bans on draftees leaving the country. What do you have for us on that? Well, that's right. Russian lawmakers have tightened the rules around military conscription, essentially making it virtually impossible, Aaron, for uh, eligible citizens to flee conscription and the country as they did uh, at the out, as many did at least at the outbreak of the war. It's in the Washington Post today. The uh, Russia moving to tighten conscription law and essentially press more men, force more men uh, to fight. The lower house adopted these new rules. It's expected to pass in the upper house as well before it will be validated by President. Vladimir Putin in the coming days. The Russian uh, opposition media Novaya Gazeta is also uh, uh, looking at this on its website. That this publication is actually banned in Russia now, um, and in its uh, in its article it explains that the most important part of this uh, new bill is a ban on foreign travel uh, if a potential draftee refuses to show up at a designated draft, draft office after being conscripted, and it will be done so electronically so that authorities can keep an eye on the whereabouts of potential draftees. Um, they also face other legal consequences like perhaps getting a ban on getting a bank loans, a driving license, or selling and buying property. So uh, essentially their choice is uh, go to war or be handicapped in every other way of their, in every other part of their social life, Aaron. Now the Moscow Times has published comments of a political dissident, meanwhile, that had been given to a court where he stood trial for treason. Vladimir Karamuza, he, uh, he appeared in court uh, earlier this week uh, to defend himself on treason charges. He's an outspoken Kremlin critic. He's, an, uh, he's notably an anti-war anti advocate. He's an historian as well. Uh, in his speech to that court this week, he likened his uh, case to Stalin's show trials and defended his actions, saying he, uh, I stand by every word I've uttered and by every word this, uh, this court has accused me of saying. He added that he only blamed himself for one thing, and that was failing to convince enough of his com compatriots and uh, politicians in democratic countries of the dangers of the current Kremlin uh, regime. Uh, he said uh, that this realization came uh, at a very uh, terrible cost, the price of war. It's a very moving, defiant, and indeed very courageous statement from this activist, Erin. Well, meanwhile, here in France, uh, Dipti, there's a bombshell investigation from the website Mediapart. Thirteen women have accused French actor Gérard Depardieu of sexual violence, notably on set. Yeah, the French investigative website Mediapart is uh, looking at this on its on the front of its website today. It launched its own investigation following those claims of 13 women who say they were victims of inappropriate sexual comments or gestures by Depardieu uh, between 2004 and 2022, most happening on the set, uh, allegedly happening on the set of 11 films or series uh, that were shot on location. Now, three have given statements, but none have filed official complaints, which Mediapart says in, is in itself very telling of uh, how much progress there still is to be made on uh, the Me Too movement because uh, I quote the feeling uh, was among many of these women that their words weighed little uh, in the face of the sort of power the monolith that is French cinema, uh, many of them, of course, also worrying about the effect that these such allegations would have on their careers, uh, especially against such an, uh, an actor of, of such importance in French cinema. In its editorial today, uh, Mediapart wonders how Depardieu was able to uh, shoot 200 films since the 70s without his behavior ever being brought into question. Uh, for his part, uh, the paper, uh, for his part, he describes himself as a gentleman and he has uh, denied all allegations against him. Well, we'll stay in France for this next story then. Uh, Liberation uh, is focusing on the environment and in particular the decimation of insect populations. That's right. Something we have talked about before uh, and even on the press review time and time again, but it's something that Liberation is wanting to remind us of once again today on its front page uh, with this very um, um, with this very w w bold stark warning it says if insect populations die then human the human race will essentially die the two are intrinsically linked we're talking bugs like bees ladybugs butterflies uh, who are among the insect populations that are dying out due to a whole range of factors you have environmental destruction you have weather you have pesticides you have uh, deforestation station as well. And, uh, and, and on that note of pesticide, this article comes just as Europe is planning to approve a controversial 
pesticide on the continent. Um, the paper actually interviewed a British biologist, Dave Goulson, who's just published a book about decimating, about the insect populations being decimated right now. He, uh, he says that they are essentially the backbone of the animal ecosystem. They are food for birds, they're food for reptiles, but they also, of course, uh, are crucial for pollinating crops that give us fruits and vegetables, but also coffee, chocolate, and pretty much every grain and cereal that there is. So um, it, it, without, without insects, we don't really have an ecosystem at all. He says, it is not too late to change things, but like many things related to the climate, time is running out, he says. All right, and finally from you, Dipti, the Guinness Book of World Records, the authority on all things records, has declared and documented the world's smallest dog. Well, as you can imagine, it's, it's not a German Shepherd or a Labrador. It is a Chihuahua, Erin, which is already one of the smallest dogs uh, around. Uh, a vet in Orlando, Florida, used a special dog measuring wicket to check Pearl, the Chihuahua's height. She clocked in at 9.14 centimeters tall and 12.7 centimeters long. You see her here in The Guardian today. She's smaller than a standard TV remote. And as you see there, uh, she's about as long as a one US $1 bill. Uh, she was born in September 2020. And at the time, she only weighed, uh, well, she only, she weighed less than 30 grams. But apparently, uh, thanks to her penchant for chicken, salmon, and and other high-end foods. She now weighs about half a kilo. Uh, she is also apparently a bit of a diva, Erin. I feel like it looks more like a, a hamster than, uh, than a Master dog. Master Yoda. I, I thought it looked like Master Yoda. <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> Definitely not what you expect when you think of dogs. But hey, uh, Tutti Kaler on with the professor. Thank you very much.